烧，银铃声，卡埃拉铃，阿萨卡哈拉铃，扎卡拉铃，烧埃铃铃声。Namaste. So, as you know, lately we've been talking about liberation <laughs> and our various different viewpoints <laughs> that are very different from what you read in most books and hear from most teachers. Well, where do we get the, you know, the gonads to be? So different, and and speak so forcefully on our own without any support from authority. Well, first of all, our authority is our experience. Experience is the best teacher, as it's said. And you can read so many books, and you can go to so many workshops, and you can hear so many lectures, and so on like that, but. Where the rubber meets the road is where your butt meets the cushion, and you sit down, shut up, and do the practice. Then there's no book, no teacher, no scripture, no theory that's going to help you, because it's you and your experience. That's all. So liberation is not a theory; it's not a doctrine; it's not a dogma, and it's certainly not a business. So if you meet anybody charging money to tell you about, or help you with, or bring you to, or give you, heaven forbid, liberation, it's bogus. Is bogus, because anyone who's actually liberated knows <laughs> that liberation is here and now. It's free. It's available to everyone, even animals. So, what to speak of charging for it? I mean, this is such a ridiculous idea. You know, it's just where do these people get off? Anyway. Then you have certain teachers who say, "Well, there's nothing you can do to get liberation." It's like Krishnamurti, J. Krishnamurti, and I think U. G. Krishnamurti too. They claim, directly or indirectly, to have liberation or to know liberation, but they won't give you any instructions on what to do to get it. Because they say, well, there's no action that leads to liberation, so you're stuck. <laughs> you simply have to adore them, you see, from afar, look up to them, and follow them, and buy their books. That's what it's all about. So there's a big business here, you know, just like yoga. I don't think poor Vivekananda. Had any idea what he was starting when he came to the U.S. in 1913 and spoke at the World Council of Religions in Chicago? I, I'm really quite sure that Yogananda had no idea what he was going to give birth to <laughs> when he started his teaching, and the same goes for most of them: Gurdjieff and Osho and Ramana. All of them. I, it happened to me too. It happened to me. I started an ashram for teaching bhakti, and some of my students wanted to turn it into a business. Well, let's not talk about business of what exactly. And when I stopped it, they started a whole scandal and tried to trash my reputation and so on. Like. 
You see, in this world, everyone is a cheater and everyone is cheated. And it's because of the nature of language, because of the, the nature of consciousness and personality and action in the world, that it's inevitable. This is why I always advise people to avoid spiritual organizations. I should say spiritual organizations because spiritual organizations is an oxymoron, like military intelligence or honest government. <laughs> It's like, what planet is that happening on? <laughs> Not this one, for sure. This planet is now under the control of the demons. It's Kali Yuga. That means you can't really trust anybody. And the reason you can't trust anybody, even people who are well-intentioned, is that language cannot possibly communicate the real truth of the matter. See, the real truth is that there is no duality. Duality just doesn't exist. It can't exist because Sarva Kalvi Dung Brahma. Only Brahman exists and everything is Brahman. Everything is nothing but pure consciousness. You cannot have an experience without consciousness. Without consciousness, as far as you're concerned, nothing exists. When you're asleep in deep sleep in the middle of the night, or if you faint or you get knocked out or something, you're under sedation, uh, anesthetic or something like that, or maybe just blackout drunk. <laughs> Nothing exists. And you can't take any action either. So pure consciousness means consciousness without an object. Consciousness without an object is only aware of itself. Yet we see all this phenomena all these different beings and all this stuff happening. Well, what is that? Duality. But duality doesn't exist and it can't exist because Sarva Kalvidang Brahma. See? So it's like duality? What duality? <laughs> there ain't no duality. <laughs> so then what is all this stuff? Well, it's an appearance. See, Brahman has two forms. Nirguna Brahman and Saguna Brahman. Brahman without qualities and Brahman with qualities. Now, strictly speaking, Saguna Brahman is illusion. In fact, another name for it is Mahamaya the great illusion of what seems to be, but actually is not. See, there's a wonderful shloka in the Srimad Bhagavatam, and there's a very similar shloka in the Tripura Sundari. And uh, it goes like this. I am, Brahman is speaking here, I am all and everything. And I am one, says Brahman. And Maya is like a reflection in the darkness. See, the original form of Brahman, Shiva, is called Vimarsha. Oh, excuse me, Prakash. Prakash means self-illuminating because he's consciousness. And then the Maya form is Vimarsha, which means reflection. 
So this Maya, all of this phenomenon, all this stuff, is a reflection of the light of Brahman in what? The illusion. Just like the water that you see in the desert is actually a refraction, not a reflection. But anyway, uh, of the light of the sun in a refraction layer, a, temp a temperature inversion near the surface of the desert. So that's true of so-called reality. <laughs> now, what is this liberation business? Well, when we forget that we are the prakasha, we are the light, without which there would be nothing. And we get all entangled in the stuff, in the reflection. That's maya, and that's suffering. That's samsara and karma. See, and when we remember that, oh, oh yeah, I'm the light. <laughs> <laughs> and we come again to the platform of Shivam, state of Shivam, Turiya consciousness, the witness. Then everything is clear. There is no Maya. I mean, there is Maya, but it's not Maya. <laughs> it's not Maha Maya because we're aware of who we really are, what we really are. And then Maya becomes Yoga Maya because Maya is always the servant of Shiva. Once one is in that state of Shivam, Shivoham, then Maya becomes his servant. But actually, we're always in the state of Shiva. And Maya is always our servant, and she's always ready to give us whatever we want. Problem is, we want the wrong stuff. We want sense perceptions, or we want wealth, or power, or fame, or whatever. And so we create karma for ourselves, and we forget who we are, and we get all involved in this stuff, and we suffer. So liberation is nothing but remembering who we are. And that can happen right now. In fact, it can only happen right now. Right here and now. If you're able to pull back from this illusion that you're all entangled in and realize your actual nature of consciousness, that's it. That's why we gave the secret of the golden flower. You can go search out that series. It's probably our most popular series. And it's a very simple technique that anybody can do. Just be conscious of consciousness. So simple. Yet, left to themselves, who would ever think of such a thing? We just take it for granted that we're conscious. And then we wonder why we're all entangled in all this karma and stuff. So here it is, a beautiful winter evening, almost full moon. Moon is shining. It's one of those beautiful tropical nights. There's a little breeze, absolutely clear. Uh, the air is so fresh. See, there's no reason to lament. There's no reason to be sad or angry. There's no reason to uh, resist temporariness of maya, the fleeting nature of life and all of that. There's no reason to not to love it. It's beautiful. That's the thing about maya. Maya is beautiful. And she is called in the scriptures the most beautiful. Why is that? Because she responds to our desire. See, Maya is our Vimarsha form, just like Shiva is our Prakash. So when we forget this, then we're in duality, so-called. 
And when we remember this, then, well, there's still duality, but it's not duality anymore. <laughs> it's Saguna Brahma. And there's no difference, the scriptures, the Upanishads say again and again, there's no difference between the Prakasha form and the Vimarsha form, the Nirguna form and the Saguna form of Brahman. No difference at all. So all we have to do is realize this, you know. Well, you might say, well, that's easy for you to say, you know, you're a big sadhu and all this stuff. No, I'm just like you. And for a long time, I was in Maya too. But slowly, slowly, I came out. How? By following the process given in the scriptures. And, you know, we've been all over this in the last seven years on this channel. Go look back at the last 600 videos. <laughs> There's so many methods, so many practices. Hmm? And then when, towards the end, you know, over the last year or two, we've tied it all together in a, in a nice structure based on the chakras, how you can clear the chakras one by one, and finally, make yourself eligible, make yourself qualified to realize this enlightenment. Now, does that mean that you disappear? Huh? That you get absorbed into Brahman and poof, it's all over? Well, for some people, yeah. People who uh, have no taste for anything higher, they can only imagine just disappearing and, and merging into Brahman, merging into Shiva. Well, that's all right. You know, they can have their taste. You know, we don't mind. But our taste is something different. We want to get out of this slum called planet Earth and reach higher states of consciousness and awareness and live in higher worlds where things, conditions are much better. And we want to serve the powers that be, uh, the demigods, the Shiva and Shakti. And we want to help other people who are stuck in the illusion to get out by following a step-by-step -step process. Now, to me, that's a heck of a lot more rewarding than simply selfishly ending your existence by merging into the source. You know, it's, it's a matter of taste, but it's also a matter of ethics, I think. After all, God has given us this life. You know, we didn't ask for it. We simply woke up one day and here we are, right? Screaming. <laughs> But still, you know, we have this body, we have this mind, we have this consciousness, we have this world, which is actually very beautiful. If you take away all the stupid people, you know, nature is very beautiful. Life is really beautiful. But we misuse it, therefore we suffer. Once we stop misusing it, we become eligible for promotion. Our, our maya can be transformed into a much better quality of illusion. <laughs> and as long as we're very cognizant and aware that it is an illusion, it can't hurt us. In fact, maya is our mother. Sometimes she gives us tough love. Huh? She can be hard. She's a di disciplinarian. But in the end, she has only our benefit in mind. And that's why we worship her. That's why we love her. And that's why we're successful. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.